ao vivo no Facebook, Histórias com Hoje, começando com mais uma história de cair por queixo, de ficar grudado assistindo, assim, ó, da Kevas, da Kevas, a história da Púnia, mas a gente já fala disso. Boa noite, queridos, boa noite, Abiro. Boa noite, Dívia. Uma nova terça-feira, mais, é. mais um episódio super, super legal. Estou abrindo aqui a nossa transmissão no Facebook também para ir acompanhando os ingressos dos nossos queridos assistentes. Sanguinha. Aqui nossa, é a sanguinha. sanguinha chegando. Vou começar a compartilhar aqui. A gente começou uma chuvarada aqui agora que eu vou te contar. Você está em Cotia. Eu estou em Cotia. Tá. Cada hora num lugar, agora eu estou em Cotia. Cada hora num lugar. Estou vendo aqui os acessos, estou aguardando o nosso público ir entrando aos pouquinhos. Eu tava... Demorou a aparecer a notificação para mim. Nossa, Aliás, não dessa apareceu... vez apareceu na hora, assim. Engraçado, pra... como tem vezes a... que... Para mim Sim. mesmo, toda da página, às vezes não aparece, sabe? Para mim, eu estava procurando aqui agora e não estava disponível. Eu tive que procurar, entrar na tua página para achar. Tá. Então, é isso que as pessoas, às vezes, uh, demoram é um pouquinho para entrar. Que as pessoas podem fazer, né? É, é outro caminho. Então, já sabem. Vamos aguardar um pouquinho. As pessoas vão entrando. Essa entrevista de hoje, ela, ela é muito rica. Mais uma, né? É a centésima, trigésima, quarta. quarta. Boa noite, Kilma. Vi que a Kilma acabou de entrar Caramba. aqui. Ah, tem, tudo bem, tudo tem mais aqui, gente, cara. tem mais gente. Kilma, tem mais gente. querida, beijo. Estou procurando os nomes para dar os cumprimentos. Hum, Já vou abrir nossa... Vocês entrando, o povo chegando, sabe? Eu sinto quase como se a gente estivesse num círculo, assim, para compartilhar essas coisas, um círculo íntimo mesmo, sabe? A gente cria é, essa mais ou menos... O Sânias faz isso, né? Ele mais ou menos... Próximo. Mais ou menos é. por aí, né? A é. gente, eu lembro da gente, no começo, é, ah, ficou, co... é ficou a cogitar de, né, de impulsionar e tal, né? E... É. Daí é. a gente tomou a decisão de que não seria por aí, que as pessoas não, teriam é. que nos encontrar como você procura um artigo raro. Não está tão disponível, não está tão fácil, embora possa ser legal para bastante gente. Boa noite, Margarete. Também está é. entrando aqui. Vou dando os nossos recados, então, enquanto as Vai pessoas lá. entram. É que eu lá. dê? Vai lá, vai lá. Pode começar com os nossos agradecimentos, você. Agradecimentos especiais à página Oxo Sem Fronteiras, Gabriel Sananda e equipe, eu inclusive, e Nelson, essa nova realidade, Francisco Siqueira, pessoal, equipe também, que sempre abraça o nosso trabalho, né? divulgando e compartilhando as nossas lives lá. Agradecimento à nossa equipe querida, HCO, Miguel, meu amor, Parita, querida, Catarina Lira, nossa, nossa legendista para assuntos, é. para assuntos de tradução. É... Agradecer a toda a sanguinha que contribui, colabora com a chave Pix, que eu já vou colocar aqui, não coloquei porque eu estou falando, mas já, já eu coloco aqui disponível para vocês. Mas é, é, ajuda bastante a gente aqui para promover os, os vídeos e cuidar de tudo para que o vídeo fique como esse que a gente vai mostrar para vocês, sabe? com a legenda em ordem, o nosso revisor de legenda aqui, né? os querido... <risos> Eu não sei para onde você está, mas você deve estar aqui. 
<risos> Oxo, que tá revisando. É ele que tá nosso revisor. Mas... Sempre que tem um erro, ele vem no meu ouvido depois. Diz, Você Ai, deixou porra. passar. <risos> gente, ah, é... que mais? a gente assiste várias vezes né, cada entrevista para é. revisar as legendas e tal. E essa de hoje realmente ela está assim, especial, porque é uma pessoa completamente desprendida, ela já tem uma estrada já percorrida, interessante, uhum. né? bem interessante, e uma pessoa de, com humor muito refinado e muito inteligente também. Sim. E ela nos dá um grande apoio do HCO, ela é. tem uma página no uh, Oxo, na internet, chama Oxo News, onde... Tem colaborações de, de gente do mundo inteiro, e, enfim, né? de, de, trabalha com anúncios do trabalho do pessoal todo, da Maduri, da Premal, da Manisha, gente que tudo que já foi entrevistada por, por nós, né? Gente muito. E, aliás, a gente conheceu ela porque ela entrou em contato pedindo uh, que a gente disponibilizasse para ela a entrevista da Anisha, porque a Anisha é. também ia fazer um trabalho que estava sendo divulgado pela Oxo News, e Sim. nos pediu entrevista, e está reproduzida, aliás, no site dela. Quando a gente produziu também o... aquela gravação do Mere Handam, aquela canção em urdu, Sim. ela escreveu um artigo no Oxo News também é, sobre isso, e está um intercâmbio bem bacana, assim. Hoje e ontem mesmo falando com ela e tal, passei cópia da entrevista, ela adorou a edição e tal, ficou realmente muito, muito bonita, muito bonita, uma história muito interessante, né, para a gente reproduzir, mas tem alguns recados que eu gostaria de dar também, é, o primeiro é deles, <risos> isso, além, de, já vou chegar lá, uh, ah, tá. gente, o que a gente faz aqui é pegar uma entrevista gravada e transmitir. né? Isso gera uma série de efeitos na internet, no Facebook. Às vezes, ocorrem problemas. né? Isso já nos ocorreu algumas vezes. Como, por exemplo, a legenda fica com problema. Então, só para avisar, se der qualquer travamento, se a legenda não ficar ruim, não ficar boa, porque no que nós temos pronto está super legível está super, super ok super conferido funciona né porém às vezes na transmissão dá problema então se acontecer vocês sabem que está estará amanhã ou mais tardar em dois dias disponível no YouTube no canal Divia 10 entra lá Divia com D I V Y A no YouTube Divia 10 número 10 tudo junto é, e lá você encontra playlists, lá estão todas as nossas temporadas, todos os episódios com uma qualidade muito boa, então se dá para qualquer travamento aqui, qualquer problema aqui, lá não, lá é, é feita a edição depois e tirado esse tipo de, de situação, muito obrigado Miguel Fine, que sempre nos dá uma, uma mão muito grande com isso, quando dá problema aqui ele faz a correção, né? Um recado importante também, nós não somos um canal oficial do Oxo, sempre foi nos solicitado e a gente faz questão de deixar isso bem claro, que não temos nenhum vínculo com a Fundação Oxo Internacional. Isso é um trabalho autônomo, voluntário, de pessoas que gostam de contar histórias, histórias com Oxo. Né? Como diz o ditado, muito melhor que o Netflix. Então... Saiba, <risos> Maratone, vai em todas as nossas playlists no YouTube ou aqui mesmo no Facebook, está tudo ali no canal Dívia 10. Tá dado, eu acho que estão dados os nossos recados, já entrou mais gente aqui. Boa Muito noite, Rita, Ulisses, boa noite, Aboda. Que mais a que eu boda, aqui? querido, Guita, a boa noite, Budas, brilhante. <risos> boa noite, Todos boa noite, Jaxã. O Guita, como ele gosta de dizer, ele gosta de jogar serpentina e confete, onde ele vai. Querido, um super beijo, Guita. É, o Guita, como a nossa sanguinha, está sempre aqui com a gente. Né? Gente, o importante... A gente... Hum. Melhor que Netflix. Eu falei, eu falei muito melhor que Netflix. 
Ah, muito melhor, né? É que Também agradecemos. Que, que saiu, eu não via meu maridinho já há uns dias. <risos> Tudo acontece. Deu um, lá, deu um lápis de memória. <risos> Gente, vamos lá, vamos chamar a nossa convidada. Vamos embora. Gente, aproveitem, a gente aparece aqui no fim para dar um, um tchauzinho. Bom, boa, boa exibição para nós todos. Para nós, estamos aqui até o final, a gente já já aparece aqui de volta. So, Punya, welcome. And how did Dosho come into your life? And what happens next? Uh, next. <laughs> next. Yeah, I was talking to Abiru the other day, and then I said, oh, if you want to know, you can read my book. Ah! <laughs> I can show Please. it to you. <laughs> Please. Please. It's called On the Edge. On the edge. Wow. And uh, it's quite, it turned out very, very big. Yeah. Very, you know, 440 pages. Wow. So it came out about eight years ago already. And uh, it was one of the first books written by a sannyasin who wasn't an important sannyasin, who wasn't close to Osho or who had or, or where Osho had asked them to write. I just wrote because I used to meet friends like you and they would ask me about stories from the old days and then we would spend time and then I felt like, oh, why don't I write them down? And so that's how, how it started. And uh, of course, it took many years because, you know, I'm not a writer professionally. And mm -hmm. I felt like, who am I to write a book? You know, like all these uh, fears, you know. <clears throat> and then there was Vina, who uh, was always pushing me, come, finish. No, it's good. Keep going. And uh, the funny thing is that I had um, many jobs in the communes. And so I could see the, the, the others or what was happening. I could see from many corners. And for mm -hmm. instance, on the ranch, I was uh, in the press office and there was a Twinkie. So I knew, you know, like uh, wild, wild country, all that mm -hmm. stuff. I knew because I would read the papers. And uh, so I could write also about the ranch, I could write, you know, like we, we made this. And of course, I was very proud that we managed to, to build all these buildings, you know. Yes. And so that's how, how it came about this book. And then in between, I wrote more in the present, which, went, which was then like the year 2002. That's when I, I finished the, the last bit we ask you to talk just to make a long story um, short mm, okay. yes. just a little yeah story. that like a long story very, short it yes. was very very complicated mm. the story how mm -hmm. i met osho is very complicated lots of bits okay. Okay. so yesterday i was thinking about my life before osho and my life in general and then I, I realized how, you know, you can imagine your life, little blobs here, you do this. And then I wanted to become an artist and a dancer and a photographer. So all things that which in the end then didn't work out. But there was, you know, like some people, they went to India in search of a master. That wasn't me. It okay. was more like coincidence or then I, suddenly I had this picture of me like a magnet and Osho was a magnet so I was kind of 
and I was a bit looking about. I knew that there was something underneath things, you know, like moon in Scorpio. You know, they always uh -huh. turn things underneath, you know, they want to see underneath the storm. And okay. <laughs> so I knew there was something underneath. And then suddenly when then Kosh, Osh, I came close to Osho, it just suddenly went like, tick. I can even hear it like tick, the two mm. metals coming together. And uh, yeah, and then the rest is history. <laughs> so, uh, so the story was, as I said, I was uh, living, you know, some people also, they were suicidal or they were, uh, they had big problems. <clears throat> actually, my life was going so beautifully that actually I felt like, oh my God, this is dangerous because I had this very lovely Portuguese boyfriend. I had a job very well paid. I had it half part time I could do the other part time I was studying biology because I wanted to know what life is that's why I started biology I was doing um, yoga like uh, this breathing exercises lots of friends going out you know life in Milan and everything was full I, maybe I even had a car I don't remember but you know life was really good and then uh. it happened this boyfriend he was a graphic designer and he made a job for the Air India there was uh, the manager of Air India had just arrived and he was very modern um, very kind of a, a bit uh, hippie but he was big solid man with wife and two children and we helped them a little bit to find the restaurants and uh, you know when they had just arrived and uh, so with this friendship then my boyfriend he did a job for his office which then in the end they didn't do so instead of giving him money they gave him a ticket but him being Portuguese with the Goa story, so he was not allowed in India, so the ticket went to me. So <laughs> there I have a free ticket to go to India, you know, and which huh. I always wanted to go to India, you know, one of those things. Now that the pre that, that summer, because it was something I had totally forgotten, our neighbor on the same level we were friends with them and suddenly out of their door comes a guy wearing orange with a mala and so i ran up to you know like they were friends so i i felt confident enough that i went up to him i took this mala in my hand i looked at the picture and there was the same man on both sides like an old mala you know <laughs> And then, <laughs> then I said, but who is this? Then he says, my master. And then I said, ah, oh, master. Uh -huh. And where does he live? In India. And then I felt like, India, you know, like in those days, a, a journey to India would cost you like a whole salary for a whole month or more. Like the prices were very expensive. So to India, like forget it, you know. And then it happened with this job, with this Air India people come, you know, like real magical, like the things just came and there I had this ticket. So I started uh, packing up and this Air India man, later he became sannyasin as well. And, the, <laughs> and they went to court. That's another story. But um, so he gave me on, then you go to Jabalpur and then you go, and I could stay in in the house of the of the wife's family so i was there not in a hotel but in somebody's family so i really had the feeling of how it is to live in india in Kolaba, in bombay and then uh, just when i was packing and there was a phone call and this some guy gave me the address of the uh, guru this guru 
And so I wrote it down and I remember Bhagwan, I wrote something very funny, but the address was correct. And then I said, okay, this, I will also go and, and visit eventually. First, I go and travel in India, which was good because otherwise I would never have done the journey. <laughs> <laughs> no Taj Mahal or anything you would have oh, seen. Yeah. Just, just uh, um, <clears throat> so I did that first. Something went wrong with the ticket. I lost my flight or something very strange happened. And so I had extra days and then I said, oh, let's go and check out this guru. Ah. And then I went there and then something went through during the day and Lakshmi was there, uh, was in a flat, Pedder was Road. Was it in, in Bombay? Bombay. Woodland? Mm -hmm. Woodland? Woodland, yeah. Okay. Taxi brought me there and then I went upstairs, first floor. Then Lakshmi was at the desk, and then she, she asked me where I coming from, from Italy. So I, so he called Lalita, who was a, a friend of Diksha. Uh, Lalita come and uh, introduce this woman to Osho Bhagwan. And then actually then Diksha came because she was more the one who was doing the talking. And so she told me, yeah, to, uh, on uh, tomorrow morning, uh, six o'clock, seven o'clock, you come to dynamic on the beach and wow. uh, so and then in the evening there was also a discourse but for because i made a mistake with the buses i didn't manage to get to the discourse it was locked already and all the shoes were outside but i was locked out so next morning i go to dynamic on the beach and i do my dynamic and i felt like yes this is it I knew this was the right thing. This I have found it. You know, like you say, Eureka, <laughs> Eureka. Yes, yes, that was yes. it. The dynamic, mm -hmm. and then Osho I saw in the evenings, and um, and then so, and then there was the the camp was coming up in Mount Abu. One and, year was it? 74. 74 it was january 74 mm -hmm. okay. and um osho had us i had like a darshan in osho's room which was like his room you know in bed and a chair and uh, i uh, went in with with dikshan first time and um i was like a second you know kind of sitting a bit behind and then Osho say, ask me, you know, take sanyas. And then I said, oh, maybe after the camp, you know. <laughs> but then, then in the end, I couldn't wait for the camp, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, <laughs> I had to call my office and my boyfriend. Oh, I have um, amoebic dysentery. <laughs> uh, I cannot car, I cannot travel, you know, like I made it up so that I could stay in one more month. <laughs> until I had the ticket to go back <laughs> and so just uh, like before we we drove away by train to Mount Abu I asked for sanyas and uh, I remember this, just this morning I remember that when I went in it was I don't remember if it was in the morning or in the afternoon and uh, I just started crying and cry, but not just crying like this, really like sobbing woo, 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 like this. And um, and then Osho put on my mala. And then I thought, oh, I wonder how much it costs. <laughs> and then he gave me the name. <laughs> yoga Punya, uh, Punya Virtue, and Yoga is Union. And then virtue, I didn't like the name virtue, you know, like in Latin, you learn virtus, you know, it's like so moralistic, I didn't like it. And then he just uh, said, virtue is opposite of sin. So whatever that, for me, wow. virtue <laughs> means uh, like to be aware, actually, that's when you're virtuous, when you are aware as much as possible so i think that's like the message 
Yeah. Then, so I was crying and crying. And then many, many years later in Pune, there was a, a man, an Indian man, and he also had come up to Osho and he was the same, just sobbing and sobbing and sobbing. And he also got the mala and the name. And then Osho said, oh, he's coming from the heart or this is coming from the heart. And then I understood because I, I always felt a bit embarrassed to have been there in Darshan and just crying like this, you know, like a child. Like, Ooh. <laughs> so that was my Darshan. And then we went to, to Mount Abu. And then, how to say, for me, it was always like, I did everything 100%. You know, like dynamic and everything. It was, if I think my my whole life, I always did everything 100%. I think, at least it feels for me, like uh, not questioning too much. I mean, you know, do jump 10 minutes. There was this uh, uh Tratak in the evening, we would have to jump up and down and look into Osho's eyes, and he would go like this. And you jump and you jump and you jump and you jump and you jump, and then the body goes by itself. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, it would actually oh. also be interesting to to talk about how how kind of the dynamic. Yes. Uh, evolved mm -hmm. yes and that i feel it's wonderful to see how osho was experimenting with things you know like in the beginning there was um, like in mount abu there was a deep breathing you know like we have now and then the catharsis and then there was just shouting who no jumping just who, who, who. And that is actually also very good in case you, for some reason, there's something wrong with your legs and you cannot do the jumping just to do the who really from the voice. That's also very powerful. And then if I'm not 100% sure, but I think that afterwards we would lie down. Mm -hmm. And okay. then I think when we came to Pune, slowly slowly the who was combined with the jumping and then the stop which osho stole from gurjev <laughs> you know yes, which is a yes, great you know, brilliant story, idea brilliant you know, idea so the fro the froze freezing so he experimented you know he changed things so that was also interesting to see and for instance, also the Kundalini, he mm -hmm. had asked a few of us to do it at home by ourselves, the shaking. And mm -hmm. then after three weeks, we would have to come and mm -hmm. uh, we uh, probably he wouldn't ask much. He would just look at you if it yes. worked or not. <laughs> and uh, so also probably. the Kundalini <laughs> was devised with experimentation trying trying out so he, it wasn't like a, one morning he wakes up and says oh <laughs> let's do this you know it was really like a, a tried out on different people and um, so that's how these meditations came yes. about ah, that's, that's so beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> that's so you that. know Thailandra Osho's brother told us something about that uh -huh. also, about the creation of dynamic and he says standing on the fourth stage started because there was not enough room for people to lie down to be possible to everyone to fit on the room uh, the room ha -ha. Yeah. <laughs> also be, it was very very crowded yeah yeah there yeah. because in winter we couldn't do outside it was too cold so we were in this hall which was it had like mattresses on the floor on the ground on the floor uh -huh. and um, it was probably in this hotel it was a hotel it was probably the dining room or something like that so it wasn't very big wow 
beautiful. The first steps of this great and big movement mm -hmm. that he yeah, yeah. he yeah 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 uh -huh. he does. Mm. <laughs> Good yeah. Wow. Uh, could you tell us a little about your life as a sannyasi since early days after Mount Abu? How did it evolve? Like uh, Puna One Ranch? Anything you want to to tell us? First, I went after Mount Abu, I went back, back to my job wearing orange and the mala. And the mala. then uh, after three months, my colleagues said, oh, you really like this color. <laughs> <laughs> and then the mala, the one girl, you know, in Italy, when you're a widow, you have a photo of your hus dead husband. And sometimes they would wear it on a brooch. And so she said, oh, sure, reminds her of death because of that. Or on the tombs in Italy, you would have like a photo of the dead person. A bit, it looks very much like a mala, also the shape of it. It uh -huh. was like that. And yes. so then I felt like, well, it is a bit of a death. <laughs> you yes. know, the, the sun has like everything is going and then of course suddenly i felt like oh i'm fed up with always cooking for friends you know so like i didn't need to have all this ego thing because i was a good cook and so all these friends started leaving my boyfriend started leaving and then suddenly new people came so uh, the orange was wearing orange and the sanyas was like renewing my my surroundings also without me having to do anything you know it was just i stopped uh, feeling like cooking so many friends they didn't come anymore because i wasn't cooking <laughs> and mm -hmm. <laughs> as it goes and uh, so then life just uh, and then after six months i went back and then osho gave me the name for a center so my little flat became a center <laughs> and then uh, you know I emptied one room which then became the meditation room and then my boyfriend also left so I was living in the living room then there there is one thing which I really feel a bit guilty about having done just uh, because one man, he, he said, yeah, don't be attached to your books and belongings. Let's just go to Pura, mm. you know, overland, which we did, you know, and then me, stupid me, you know, I, I followed that. And then I didn't, I left the flat to a girl who was non sannyasin but I didn't take care that the center went on. So when I arrived in Pune, Osho wasn't very pleased with that. And so afterwards, I ran some other um, centers, one in Geneva, which had uh, previously, Diksha had that center before. I took it on because she wanted to go to Pune. And there, when I left Geneva, I made sure that it would go on. So mm. I felt like I had, mm, yeah, I hadn't done the right thing just to to do my own thing, just to go and leave the center like that, you know, like yes. being irresponsible. It wasn't uh -huh. uh, rebel. Good. Yeah, <laughs> I just, no, I wanted to prove to that man that yes, of course, I can drop everything, you know, like oh, yes. you know yeah. how women are stupid. No, just, just yeah. one question. You, yeah, you said learning. you always learning. <laughs> 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 you said you had uh, a center at uh, in the flat how about the neighbors <laughs> oh we used to go this was a major operation on a sunday we would organize cars like with phone calls and then uh, you pick up so and so and then we would go out in the woods then we had a little stereo with the, the cassette 
and we would do dynamic in the woods. Uh -huh. And then afterwards we had breakfast together. Other mm -hmm. meditations I did like uh, uh, Devavani and things like that we could do in, in the house. But uh, it was just a few people, like maybe four or five people at the same time. Like there was no sannyasins. Like the guy who gave me, who had the mala, who gave me the address. There was him in Milan, one million people at the time. Then there was this guy who wanted me to travel with him overland. That was all the sannyasins in Milan. So it was all like building up the clientele, you know, like. Yes, yes. And the same in Geneva later, we were like Diksha and Dalita, they went to Pune, and there was me and a few hippies. <laughs> they were also in Pune. So practically we were just two sannyasins there. And then we would do dynamic there. We did dynamic every day before work. I would go there, put on the speakers and everything. And that was a dojo above a big shop, which wasn't open at that time yet. And so we could make noise, loud, dynamic, yes. in this beautiful dojo, wonderful. Uh -huh. And so the people would come, being attracted, or sometimes I would put flyers, I think, and then they would do dynamic, and then they go to Pura. Then we had to make more clients, you know? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you had to <laughs> make well, more and more publicity. <laughs> they would always go to Pune. Go to them. Pune. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> and then eventually they would come back and, uh, you know, help out. And so it was, uh, it was good. I think this place in Geneva was a kind of part of the magnet. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't know if the center was there already. Maybe. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. And how is today? Can you tell us you want to tell about today? Today? Nowadays, uh, how is uh, Osho in your life? And, if, yeah. Uh -huh. and... I, I was thinking like Osho is becoming much more subtle. Like I don't have any Osho pictures in my, in my office. I have his box. He had given to me this oh. box. I uh -huh. don't know if you can see it. Yes. And yes. There, there is hairs or, or beard in it, in it. So this I have on the desk. But um, sometimes when I think of Osho, I actually feel him right here. <laughs> with his, you know, like with, with a big grin, you know, like I feel it right. like we are here. <laughs> and on the other hand, I feel like always more subtle, more subtle, more, more invisible. And I don't know, I feel there is maybe is more this freedom or I, I don't really know how to explain. But it's uh, like, like uh, I really think of Osho, Osho, I suppose. Of course, I read Osho, Osho's texts. We have Osho news, you know, mm. but uh, uh, he is becoming very, ab very abstract in a way. Mm. And I don't know, sometimes when you think uh, the speed of light, I don't know, can you imagine a speed of light? I imagine like this. So that's how I feel, Osh. Osh, Osh very, yeah. like a vibration, you know, like atoms, like going like this. That's how, how I feel. Mm. And let's say the path or the meditation for me is to, as much as possible, to be aware of this moment. Like now, you know, the, uh, there is the outside, there is you guys, me sitting here, me, this voice coming out. Of mm. course, I get lost, you know, <laughs> mm. 
but I, I try to always kind of come back again during the day. That's kind of what it's like. A little, my little discipline would be like this, or when I'm with somebody and there is a, a confrontation, just see how do I feel, why do I feel like this, you know, kind of coming back to myself. Mm. So that's like my my little meditation, or I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Um, how about Ocean News? That was about this project. How did it ah. start? Yeah, it started, I say, almost like 18 years ago, really long time ago. I was living in Scotland and somebody down south, Vivek, is, uh, we have this woman, Phoebe, who does our horoscope, her husband. I don't know how he contacted me and said, listen, Manisha is coming and do from Australia and doing this workshop. People need to know about it. And then I, my hobby was doing websites. And then I could, I figured out that one page comes up when you write Osho UK. And so I contacted this man and he gave me permission to use a page. So I started putting uh, the events in there. And then I thought, let's also put the addresses where people can act when, where people can meditate because official places to meditate. Some are official, but nothing is happening there. And there are some unofficial and they have meditations every day. So I made a list of that connecting, you know, and then after a while, Vina, she says, oh, maybe I could write an article here and there and maybe maybe interviews, talk about artists and events, talk about events before and afterwards and so on. And uh, so that went on. We had then our uh, domain name eventually, oshoinuk.com, which still exists, but now it's a uh, new a new design and more simple, no more like a magazine like we had. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to Greece and then Vina was traveling to China often and she didn't have much energy. And I felt that from Greece doing something about the UK alone didn't feel right. And so I, I looked, uh, oshonews.com was available said, oh, well, that's the invitation. And so I started making something similar, of course, with lots of ideas which were from Vina. Of course, I want to give her credit for that. And uh, so I started that. And after, uh, after short, uh, Bhagwati, who works for, uh, she writes for Viha Connection, she asked if she can join, so we joined. So we, we worked together for more than 10 years. And uh, so the whole thing grew bigger and bigger. And uh, so now it's like my, it's, it's not that I have Osho News. It's more like Osho News has me. <laughs> like Osho News has now its own life. It's like its own thing and people are sending in articles, you know, like sometimes I hardly have anything. Sometimes I go and ask, oh, these paintings are beautiful. What if we did something? You know, some people, they need to be invited. Or sometimes I know, why don't you write about your life? And many say, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, so sometimes it's me asking, but many times people send. So that's beautiful. So. Practically, I could sit here and things just come oh, without geez. me having to think, oh, what do we do this month? So, you know, things just come like that. So that's beautiful. Yeah, that's a great job. Yeah. Yeah. And then I had ideas like with that we wanted to talk about your videos. So that yes. will come eventually. Yes. So I put like a, a little flea in people's ears. And then mm -hmm. maybe when they have time, <laughs> yes, yes, they write it. <laughs> sure, sure. Like you this. know, Kunya, uh, 
doing these stories com Osho, I feel like I'm working in Puna. I'm working for Osho. Divya also feels the same. So it's just great. We don't get any money out of it. We yeah. just, we, it's just like, a, how they call it? Saba is working meditation, something like that. Yeah? Sadhana. 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 Yes. Sadhana. Our sadhana. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Just the reward is doing, not the outcome. It's just doing is the reward. Yeah, just yeah. it just goes by itself. Yeah. Yes. yes. Great. Yes. Beautiful. And you... one thing uh, mm. I also learned that uh, I nowadays I just do things I enjoy doing. Mm. There were some things I, I had prepared with my mind. Oh, this would be nice to have, but I never really enjoyed doing it. So now I said, we don't do that anymore. You know, like I do, I, I do just what I enjoy, like doing, you know, some days I feel like working on this, I do that. Some days I don't feel like working, I do some, something else. Yeah. <laughs> Just going with the flow. <laughs> yes, that's beautiful. Not, not to force myself, because I'm, I'm a slave driver. I'm very good at uh, forcing myself, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, mm -hmm. keep running, keep doing, you know, uh, 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 you know, like Swiss upbringing, yes. you know, like. <laughs> I understand. But, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm too. And now, <laughs> now I'm old enough, I can say I can just float. Mm. <laughs> Mm. Maybe, maybe I can get there someday. <laughs> <laughs> I have some years to go to some. Yes, just let the, mm. the years go. <laughs> Punya, yesterday we were, we were chatting and you told me a beautiful story about music in Corfu and some events there. Could you share a little about that? Something oh, like that. we were talking about uh, Peter McKenna. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think if, but for five years or so, he came every summer to give workshops at uh, Alexis Zorbas. And uh, at that time, I was uh, organizing the music for the Buddha Hall, we had a band for a while, and then in summer there were all these musicians coming, and then I thought, oh, let let them engage and ask them if they want to play in Buddha Hall, and nobody ever said no. So it was also in uh, like a calendar. We had uh, this man comes then, and he will play then, and and so. And so one night, uh, it was uh, Peter Bakena's uh, time. It was maybe just two weeks a year he was there. So it was just that one Saturday. And then after the discourse, so he would sing in the beginning before discourse and then afterwards. And then there was like an extra, like uh, there was this music, music group. And uh, it had never happened before. There were a lot of people in Arillas because Deva Premal and Miten, they had these workshops and those workshops are, were like 250 people in one go. They had a big place in the open. So all these people were also there. So the Buddha Hall was really full. Mm -hmm. So Peter McKenna was singing these, uh, you know, the, the songs, uh, um, the sun, the sun behind the sun, <laughs> the sun, and uh, step into the fire, all these old songs. Mm -hmm. And um, them playing, there was probably somebody on the uh, djembe. And we were all dancing, and the energy was, you could feel like like the, the roof was <laughs> lifting. And there were many sannyasins from Puna one there, because they were there because of Deva Premal's uh, okay. workshop. They come, they came every year. And, uh, and then we looked at each other's eyes and said, and we had this every night in Buddha Hall. 
you know, like you feel like you, I don't know, you just fly. Yeah, really, you fly. Yeah. And this was there just with, with this music and his beautiful voice. He had uh, such a beautiful voice. Yeah. Wow, yes. wow, wow. Uh, you, yeah. you, know, you know, I told you yesterday, I have been involved in some meditation centers in Brazil uh, throughout time, yeah, since I took sinus. Maybe three or four meditation centers in here where I live in Porto Alegre or in Sao Paulo, even or north of Brazil. And I used to call musicians and form bands to play. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the last one, especially of some years ago, no one knew those songs. I was oh, to really? call people, oh. yes, I was to call people, they are new and they teach them the songs I had it written and the chords, everything. And well, my, my wife is a musician. She helps. Yeah, she's uh -huh. a singer. And uh, people came together and they all were stoned. For about two, three weeks after that, we get together and people were just blissed out. You know, it's amazing. All the time it happens. So for me, these songs are carried with Osho's energy yeah, very yeah. strongly. Yeah, if yeah. you get a bunch of people, you sing <clears throat> them, Osho is there. It's amazing. This yeah, is my experience. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. It's not mental, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there are places uh, where you can, you can look them up. Like uh, sanyas.viki, yes. they have all the yes. songs and those pieces. I know, I yeah, downloaded yeah. 100 <laughs> songs from that. <laughs> mm -hmm. so I'm doing a big research on those songs. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful mm -hmm. ones. Yes, mm -hmm. just two days ago, I was like, as you said, goosebumps, yeah? <laughs> uh, because I found one Indian song, Urdu, it was the language. Then I found that. Osho explaining the meaning of the words and saying that English words fall short to Urdu language because yeah. it comes from the heart. It's very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I want to do something with that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Again, beautiful. It's a new, yeah. new project maybe comes. But Tell us a little about singing. I remember there uh, I used to play percussion. This all uh, too has to do with Niveda, no? Because on drive-by, he always used to give his his instruments. He used to play on the drum, or maybe not the big surdo he used to yeah. play. But uh, to us, sometimes he would give a snare, and of course, it was very difficult. So to me, once he gave me a kabasa, and then I just loved the sound I was playing, and then he he really liked the way I was playing. And so for many months, it seemed I was playing, it was me there, and then Rupesh and, and uh, Nivedano, with the three of us. And then Osho would always look at Rupesh going like this. <laughs> and I was going faster and faster and faster. And then afterwards, you know, like when you say you faint, you see black. But there I would faint and you see white. <laughs> you know, like, shh. You don't know where you are. <laughs> That's the thing. And then wow. he would drive, drive on. So That's that was uh, like my drug was then played to play ah. this. <laughs> yes, I can wonderful. imagine. I can imagine. And then, and then in Pune too, I felt like, oh, maybe I can play at birthday parties. And, um, and then in the end, I played at... Uh, at some music groups and uh, at um, at the Sufi dance and uh, at uh, Sanya's uh, Sanya's celebrations, uh, mostly Milarepa was playing, and I, I just had this picture when you were talking about being stoned about singing that there was the the Sanya celebration at some point was on a Saturday morning or Sunday morning, I thought Saturday morning. And then afterwards, us musicians, I, I just still have this picture of Milarepa sitting on the Zen wall, just like this, 
you know, like、mm. totally just spaced out. And I think that after that, because nobody could go back to work, they、mm. moved it to the evening. The Sanya celebration was no more in the morning, but in the evening. Because then、ah. in the evening you go to bed, and then next day you go back to work, you know. Because <laughs> everybody after the Sanya celebration, it was like, <laughs> and、uh, I'm sure it was the music and the songs which would、uh, make that. Ikitero yoro kobi. I want you to tell you a funny story about the enlightened drum. So there was this. Oh, if I think of this drum, now when we moved to England, this house is very small, and I felt like、uh, I couldn't really. There was not really place here because it's quite a big, you know, big drum,、mm. and so I left it with another musician in Corfu. She has a very beautiful house. So she's now looking after it, and、uh, now that I talk about it, I I regretted a little bit. I feel like homesick for it. <laughs> and this was a drum made of wood on the side, about this big, beautiful sound, very strong, hollow, and with the wood, it was really very full the sound, and. I learned how to play the surdo, you know, like this. I just look how the other the boys are doing it, and then I do. And then there were many events, like、uh, in workshops, that they would ask for musicians to come,、uh, or sometimes somebody dies. You know, we go to the burning ghats, and I was playing the drum, so I was always looking after this drum. Like after the burning guts, I would wash it or like clean it, you know. And、um, it was my favorite drum. And then、um, many years pass, and then、uh, Nivedha no told me that、uh, he had he was playing with that drum the three beats. And then one day、uh, Osho says, "Yeah." I have it in in my book. I I put the the piece、uh, where Osho says something like,、uh, "Yeah, he can beat the drum. The drum is getting enlightened, but not Nivedano or something like that." <laughs> And then Nivedano told me、uh, later that. The following day, of course, he prepares his kit, you know, before the disco, and this drum didn't want to be played. <laughs> you know, she was now enlightened, you know, <laughs> and actually, the photo which is in the book of that discourse, it's another drum because they took the photographs the next day. It's a it's a metal sword, same size, but it's not that drum.、Ah. And、uh, <laughs> so eventually, Osho left his body, and I really felt like I wanted to have something from Osho. And、uh, so then、uh, Niveda, no, he gave me I gave something else instead, and、uh, so he gave me this drum. And、wow. then for a while, I used to play it. In、uh, heart dance here and there, and then I realized that the the drum was actually quite happy not to be played. You know, like <laughs> she's,、uh, yeah, she's happy because sometimes I would talk and say I'm sorry. You know, like、uh, I don't have much opportunity to play you, and、uh, she said, "Oh, fine, I'm I just sit here." And so that's. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing now in Greece. Maybe、no. I will write to Amla. Ask she's her.、Doing. Ask her to have a photo. I, yeah. Of this drum, so we can. Yeah. Publish. I have a. I have a photo. Ah,、yeah. okay.、Uh. I can send you, but I can ask her also.、Ah, so、okay. that was a nice story of the enlightened drum because. Osho was saying because she's empty, 
you know, the, her sound comes from her emptiness. Mm -hmm. Mm. I like the way you say surdu to talk about the surdu as a female. Oh yeah, yeah, she's a small one. I also used to play the big, big one. We used to do something like Oshoba, and then Amlas was uh, also playing. We were playing together, ding dong, ding dong, you know, ding dong, and uh, oh. there was a, a big one also there. I really like that. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> About music to play kind of percussion or any of rhythm, I always feel like you have to play with your bum. You know, the bum you play, the bum. you are okay. in your bum. That's where the, uh -huh. <laughs> it's not here or there, or it's okay. in your bum. Yes, that's where the rhythm is. No? Ah, <laughs> you play with your bum. <laughs> that's nice. That's <laughs> nice. In Italian, col culo. Col culo. <laughs> in Brazil, qua bunda. Bunga. In, bunda. in Japan, is shiri. <laughs> shiri. <laughs> shiri. So, Punya, I think uh, we are getting to close, close <laughs> our interview beautiful one i think we could go on forever with you <laughs> we used to ask people the last question uh, if you could say one word for ocean what is it so to him i would say thank you <laughs> oh. gratitude yeah that's, that's <laughs> mm. <laughs> Thank you, beloved. Thank you. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> that was <Ooh>. fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao. Oh, so. <laughs> oh, so, querida. Yay. How beautiful this was. Thank you. Thank you. You're so um, good at it. You're so good at it. We do our best, yeah. Yeah, our yeah, yeah, they are perfect. I think Divya is frozen on the. Is she? <laughs> <laughs> so goodbye. Ciao. Thank you so Ciao, much. Viro. Ciao. <laughs>
A gente fica se Vai contendo. ser bom. Bacana. <risos> Tentando ser politicamente. Modesto, ser modesto, ser modesto. Do caramba! <risos> gente, obrigado por ter Ai. ficado até este final com a gente. Um super beijo. Terça-feira que vem tem mais. É isso, Didi. Beijo. Beijos. E até terça que vem. Então aí. Como é que é travar assim? Calma, não sei. <risos>